Hey everyone, it's Davey Mooney coming to you from the University of North Texas where I run the jazz guitar program. I'm a Benedetto artist, Sunnyside Records artist. Got the new Sunnyside record coming out June 9th. It's going to be called Way Back. We recorded it in Brazil over the summer. Um, turned out really great. I'm excited about it. Got my Mel Bay books, Personalizing Jazz Vocabulary, and the new one Into the Labyrinth, An Anatomy of Position Playing for Jazz Guitar. And uh, getting ready for the semester to start. It's uh, mid-January over here in uh, sunny Denton, Texas. Weather's nice. Um, about to do spring 2023, y'all. But before we do that, I want to talk about uh, Beatrice. Great tune, jazz standard by uh, tenor saxophone player Sam Rivers, who uh, I should confess I'm not as familiar with as I should be. And this tune is from great record called Fuchsia Swing Song that I've heard a few times and I know uh, that's that record also has the tune Cyclic Episode which is a real uh, popular tune like in the modern jazz uh, realm I, I remember playing that with Mike Moreno on a duo gig back in New York shout out to Mike Moreno um, but yeah I need to check out some more Sam Rivers and some of those records um, he's on like the Miles in Tokyo, right? He replaced George Coleman before uh, Wayne Shorter got in that band in the, around the same time period, 64, probably 65. And uh, so this tune is on that record. It's also on uh, State of the Tenor, uh, the Joe Henderson Trio live stuff from the uh, 80s with uh, Ron Carter. Is it Al Foster on drums? Gosh, I should have looked that up before I got on here. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I rely on my uh, my recall. I think I'm right about that. Um, but uh, yeah, and I actually, you know, this tune, it came to me when I was a freshman here at UNT. I was in a small group with uh, some great musicians who are doing great things out in the in the wide world these days. Uh, Tyler Summers on alto sax. Shout out to Tyler Summers, also a great vocalist. I believe is he in Nashville? I don't know where yet, Tyler, but he's a Canadian uh, alto player, and it was sort of his group. He organized it. We had Matt Wigton on bass. Shout out to Matt Wigton. Jonathan Wagner on drums, San Antonio. Um, and Tyler kind of was sort of the leader, and he brought in a lot of music. There was a suite that we did. This is, we're going back 25 years, because it's 2023, right? My goodness. But I remember the first tune we played was Beatrice, and I had never played it before. And so he had a chart on it. And I was like, oh, this sounds cool. And I feel like we played it kind of slow. Although, again, I don't remember. But, uh, you know, the both the, uh, the the original one on Fuchsia Swing Song has this cool kind of intro, um, piano intro. That's a great record, right? It's got Jackie Byard. Shout out to Jackie Byard. Uh, the late, great Jackie Byard, Ron Carter, and uh, Tony Williams on drums. And he does this little intro, and then the tempo is like... song 16 bars um, I remember I did a video on invitation recently where I, I forgot to sort of count the bars before I did the video and I was like how many bars is the song but Beatrice is 16 lovely bars for four bar phrases and uh, it's really nice I'll talk, talk about the chords that was the melody and the chords that I just played but it's an F and you get like F major to G flat major 7 sharp 11 to F major again to E flat major 7 sharp 11 and each chord gets one bar D minor 7 E flat major 7 sharp 11 D minor sometimes there's a little walk down but to B flat minor 7 although that original version they kind of just play D minor and then B flat minor D flat minor 6 something like that A minor 7 B flat major then a E minor 7 flat 5 A7 D minor and that you know they get two beats each and that uh, E minor 7 flat 5 and A7 get two beats each and that that measure D minor and then the turnaround you get G minor like a 2 but instead of a 5 you get G flat major 7 
sharp 11 again, so like a tritone sub, and then it ends on F minor. And G flat major 7. So, really nice, nice chords, and I think what I'm going to talk about primarily is uh, the application of, of pentatonics on uh, this chord progression. And I, I like it a lot because, like for instance, well, I'll just dive right in. So that first chord, obviously it's an F major 7 chord. You could play F major scale. That would be a good option. You could arpeggiate. But an obvious pentatonic application would be like A minor pentatonic. Um, and I convert uh, as a guitarist, you know, A minor pentatonic, Stairway to Heaven solo, you know, minor pentatonic is the coin of the realm in rock and a lot of blues, uh, the stuff that I came up on. So I just always convert things to minor pentatonics. I mean, obviously that could be C minor pentatonic too, C major pentatonic, sorry. But so, and, and if you want to make a rule or come up with a uh, strategy for doing this to get into that sound, when you have a major seven chord, you can play a minor pentatonic off the third. So F major seven, A minor pentatonic. And I tell my students and uh, whoever will listen that uh, a lot of the time these days I play uh, six note collections somehow. I find that, you know, if I'm playing on that F major, I might play that A minor pentatonic and also an F. And I don't know why I do that. Sometimes I'll add in the, the major scale notes too, and I can't really tell if I'm adding notes to a pentatonic or taking notes away from a major scale or whatever, but it's a nice collection of notes. And when you go up a half step to G flat major seven, you could just go up and play B flat minor pentatonic. Although another strategy, because when you have a major seven sharp 11, and I've said this in other videos, um, I remember Clyde Kerr teaching us this back in like the 90s. And I was like, wow, because I really was in, I was a teenager, so I was coming from the minor pentatonics uh, pretty hard, you know, when I first started playing jazz, I was like, everything was minor pentatonic to me. And he said like, when you have a major seven sharp 11, go down a half step and play a minor pentatonic. So on a G flat major seven sharp 11, F minor pentatonic works really well. And then if you think about it, you got the first two chords, it's kind of like F major to F minor in a certain sense. could be A minor pentatonic to F minor pentatonic, which is A minor pentatonic to A flat major pentatonic, if you want to convert it the other way. And then the next chord is E flat major 7. It's kind of E flat major 7 sharp 11. It's, it's got an A in it. It's got any A at all. It's got an A natural. So that's, you could go down and have that we play D minor pentatonic. F major pentatonic. So there's a lot of options here. <laughs> and a lot of it is the same notes, but you know, say say you went F major pentatonic for the first chord because it's an F major chord, and then went to F minor pentatonic, and then went to F major pentatonic again, back to F, and then stayed on F major pentatonic for the E flat major seven. That would be F major pentatonic, F minor pentatonic. F major pentatonic. Uh, so really only changing one note, right? Well, that's not true. <laughs> You're not changing that many notes. Uh, it's funny how sometimes, you know, a lot of these things are in my fingers, and when I go to articulate them, I uh, sometimes my fingers are ahead of my brain, or my brain is... It's with my fingers, but the, the intellectual part of it sometimes gets a little bit gets a little bit off, but you know, that's why I'm working on this teaching thing all the time. But anyway, so that's a couple options there, right? Honestly, I kind of like the A minor pentatonic on the F major chord, which is C major pentatonic, and I do like, sometimes I'll just arpeggiate G flat major, but I do like, do like the sound of an F minor pentatonic on that chord. major 7 again, I might arpeggiate, but I might go to that D minor pentatonic sound. So, and I'll, I'll say them as uh, 
minor pentatonics again. I know I was mixing it up, but sometimes I mix it up because it can sort of let you see how close everything is. Because then after that E flat major seven, you have a D minor seven, right? So you're, you're on D minor pentatonic, you're already there. And then the next chord's E flat major seven again, so you're just rocking on D minor pentatonic for a while because then there's D minor again. And then there's a B flat minor where you kind of have to change it up. And that's the point in the song, like if I play this tune with students or I watch students play it, I look to see if when that B flat minor comes, if they actually address the fact that like in terms of guide tones, that B flat minor has got a D flat in it. And none of, I guess the G flat kind of has a D, has a, uh, a D flat in it as well, G flat major seven. But the chords leading up to that B flat minor are all kind of, like I said, they can all kind of be D minor pentatonic. And you can play some blues and it sounds good to play some blues. B flat minor comes. That D flat, uh, and I guess theoretically like an A flat as well, right? I don't, I don't think that B flat minor. I guess you could make it be minor major seven. But I hear it as being a Dorian kind of sound, and that's sort of a different color that's sprinkled into the the song that's outside of the uh, the tonality of. I mean, the tonality shifts a little bit, but like I said, when you're going from E flat major seven sharp 11, D minor seven, E flat major seven sharp 11, D minor seven, all that is. And then when you have that come in, it's pretty drastic. Then the next chord, you got A minor seven to B flat major seven sharp 11. And going back to our pentatonic idea on A minor seven, you play A minor pentatonic, major seven you can play a minor pentatonic and you can add notes to that like I said before I don't always just play the five notes um, just like when I'm playing the major scale I don't always just play the seven notes but it's kind of like a way to see the commonality between these chords that look like they move but in the upper structure they don't really move much at all to D minor and again it's kind of nice I mean that E minor 7 flat 5 is still kind of B flat major 7 sharp 11 right one way to think about that chord if you think of it from the fifth it's a B flat major 7 it is a B flat major 7 sharp 11 right but on that A7 again you have C sharp aka D flat you know and it's nice in the midst of all that sort of uh ethereal major seven sharp 11 stuff to have a five one kind of a grounds the the harmony a little bit and then g minor seven is also again like b flat major seven right g minor seven from the third and that g flat major seven sharp 11 again you have a d flat in there minor so on that G flat major 7 before it you can play F minor pentatonic the last chord is also G flat major 7 so again I'll go from the from the top so F major A minor pentatonic maybe G flat major 7 you can play B flat minor pentatonic or F minor pentatonic triad pair from uh, The Heat Is On. <laughs> you get F and E flat triad pair. D minor. Then on B flat minor 7, I feel like you want to change it up a little bit. Maybe play some bebop, play some uh, 
B flat Dorian, something like that, arpeggiate. A minor seven, A minor pentatonic, B flat, major seven, sharp eleven, arpeggiate, or you can still play off of A minor pentatonic. Two five to D minor. You know, five eighth note resolution cells. Then the two five to F minor, G minor seven. Now I wouldn't necessarily pentatonic that one because we're sort of in. Uh, I mean, I could, but uh, we're sort of in a more functional harmony land there. So I'm thinking that. Seven arpeggio to G flat major seven. Could be B flat minor pentatonic again, could be F minor pentatonic, could be a G flat major seven arpeggio. F minor. You can kind of do like a bluesy turnaround there because F minor to G flat major seven. I don't think you have that progression a lot in tunes from this period, right? It's a way shorter tune. It's like, uh, how's Deluge? minor seven and then a major seven up a half stop that's in a lot of tunes and you can like blues it out if you want by playing the minor pentatonic of the minor chord even when it goes up a half step to a major chord uh, and one other, one other thing that I wanted to talk about this tune I was just listening to that version on fuchsia swing swing one more thing I want to talk about is the the Jackie Byard uh, solo on uh, fuchsia swing song on that record um, if that's a Gorman gas reference maybe lady fuchsia anyway but he plays like some stuff on F major, some stuff on G flat major, some stuff on F major. And then on the E flat major seven, he plays a really loud and deliberate E natural up top. And then when the, on the D minor, he plays like a, a B. And then when it goes to E flat major again, he plays an E natural again down in that octave. So some really like deliberate, gnarly dissonances that, man, they sound really cool. <laughs> Um, and I think he does it at another point in the solo too, but that's, you know, I really love Jackie Byer. Particularly, I love the record of Far Cry, if you all are familiar with that one, with uh, Dolphy and Booker Little. Who is that? Is that Roy Haynes? I think Ron Carter's on that record too. And man, this, he wrote some, Jackie Byer wrote some beautiful music for that uh, record as well. So, but anyway... I'm gonna play a few on Beatrice and explore some of these ideas. And yeah, I'm gonna go check out some Sam Rivers because um, I, I got a little bit of a, a blind spot. Um, Fuchsia uh, Swing Song is the record that this comes from. And uh, yeah, it's a great tune. All right, enjoy. Okay. 